Just like the many references to Lolita fashion in anime, there are many appearances of Lolita fashion and Lolita inspired characters in video games. There are also plenty of adjacent video games that are associated with Lolita community culture that don't necessarily have reflections of the fashion, but sort of give off the vibes of the lifestyle. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about 10 specific games slash franchises that have visual appearances of Lolita fashion or that are similar to Lolita fashion. And these are all games that I have played. I know that there are a bunch out there that I probably haven't. So if there's any that I don't mention in this list, please feel free to leave it in the comments below and maybe I'll check them out. If you already know about this video game or you want to skip to a particular one, as always, there's a timeline in my description so you can jump around this video. I feel like playing video games is such a nice way to escape and unwind and have fun. And it's really cool to be able to sort of mix your interest in Lolita fashion into that. I am all about immersing yourself in cute ambiance and one way to do that is through scents and today's sponsor Scentbird. I think it's really cool to create different fragrance themes for different Lolita fashion coordinates and for events but buying full bottles for that can be really expensive. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service where you can choose a new designer fragrance to try out every month for just $17. It's flexible so you can skip any month without penalties. You can choose to upgrade to receive two or three products each month. With each fragrance, you get a 30 day supply to try out which is great for traveling because they come in these really convenient cases that lock and protect the bottle itself. And I didn't realize until watching another YouTuber's sponsor that you can actually spray it within this bottle. You don't have to remove it every single time, but it does have a locking mechanism so that when you travel, it won't accidentally spray. There are over 600 designer brands to choose from, perfumes and colognes with unisex options too, like Prada, Gucci, and Versace, plus indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. Scents have so much connection with memory, which is why I like to choose a new scent for different conventions and Lolita events so that I can create memories with that scent and later on down the road, I can buy a full bottle of it and relive those memories. And Scentbird also sells a lot of full bottle versions of these samples. The theme I decided to go with for choosing these fragrances was really cute bottles. <laughs> I thought that the Parfums de Marly Paris Delina had the absolute cutest bottle. And though I did really like this fragrance, I think that my favorite for everyday wear was Prada Candy. I really, really enjoyed this scent. It has notes of caramel, musk, and benzoin, which on paper I never would have thought that I'd like, but it does create this really upscale sweet candy fragrance that isn't too powerful. However, this one, the Parfums de Marly Paris Delina, it smells like sweet, fresh tea. I feel like this would be a great tea party scent. It has notes of Turkish rose, rhubarb, vanilla, cashmere, and peony. <laughs> if you decide to shop with Scentbird, make sure to click my link below or scan the QR code on screen and use my code LORE55 for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's only about $8 for your first month. Thank you so much Scentbird for sponsoring this video and for helping me smell lovely. I'm going to start with the most obvious, probably required by law in the eyes of most Lolitas at this point, which is Style Savvy. Also known as Style Boutique in the UK and Girls Mode in Japan. My experience is with the North American release Style Savvy, so if any of the terminology I use is different than the region that you played in, I apologize, but that is the one that I know. <laughs> Style Savvy has four releases and I have played all of them, but my favorite is of course Fashion Forward. And I might just be biased because that's the one that I started with because that's when I discovered it. And when I went to go play Trendsetters and the original Style Savvy, I just felt like it was kind of bare and there were things missing. Fashion Forward really plays into this dollhouse aesthetic and theme, which makes it feel very 
cartoony and colorful. Styling Star was the release after Fashion Forward, and although it has some of my favorite pieces in the game, it introduced an idol part where you do things with singing and dancing idols that I just really couldn't get into. At its core, Style Savvy is a series where you run a fashion boutique and you help customers choose individual items and complete outfits. As you progress, you decide what styles your store wants to carry, and in the beginning this is based off of the requests you get from customers, but eventually you create a tailored customer base for the style of fashion that you want to carry. So by the end of all of my games, everyone's a Lolita. There are many other facets to this game, like giving makeovers, in some creating nails, changing people's hairstyles, designing rooms, running fashion shows, and many other little side objectives, but the main focus is around styling. The two main Lolita-inspired fashion brands are Marble Lily, which has heavy inspiration from Angelic Pretty, in my opinion. It's a very sweet Lolita brand. The other is Raven Candle, which is a more gothic Lolita-leaning brand, and you can definitely see inspiration from Moi Me Moitié, as well as the brand that I always struggle to say, A l'intérieur Pierrot, the other AP. There is no confirmed affiliation between these real-world brands, except for a Baby the Star Shine Bright DLC, which was for Japanese trendsetters. In Style Savvy, the Lolita-inspired style of clothing is called baby doll and not lolita i think this is to be safer with a foreign audience and avoid any connotations or connections with the book which if you still think that or have a problem with that this is the video for you go check it out right now <laughs> if you follow me on any platform outside of youtube i might have even made a community posts on YouTube, but you probably saw me freaking out at the announcement of Fashion Dreamer. Fashion Dreamer is an upcoming Nintendo Switch game and not much information has been released at the time of recording. There has just been a brief trailer and introduction. What we know so far is that the gameplay will take place around being a fashion influencer, which might not be as fun for me because that's what I do for work in real life. But then again, I used to work in retail and I still enjoyed style savvy, so <laughs> we'll see. I'm definitely gonna stream it 100%. I'm not sure if it'll be on YouTube or Twitch, but I'll figure that out, stay tuned. From what little gameplay we have seen, there have already been sightings of baby doll fashion or Lolita fashion or whatever they decide to call it in this game, a fashion inspired by Lolita. <laughs> This game is being developed by Sin Sophia, which is the same developers as Style Savvy. So for all intensive purposes, this is the Style Savvy for the Switch. I really hope that they use the same brand names that they've used throughout the Style Savvy franchise because I've become so familiar with them and friends and I, we like to refer to real life pieces by those brands. Like I'm absolutely wearing a Marble Lily coordinate right now. It seems like Fashion Dreamer will be the name that they use across regions, so hopefully it'll be less confusing than Style Boutique Girls Mode Style Savvy. A game similar to Style Savvy that does use the term Lolita is Girls Fashion Shoot for the 3DS. This is another 3DS game. I swear not every game on this list is for the 3DS. I promise we will get to other platforms soon. Girls Fashion Shoot came out in 2013, shortly after Trendsetters, and the games look so similar in their interface and style that I thought for sure they had to be related and they are not. I could not find any connections between these two franchises, so it seems as though this might have actually been a competitor with Style Semi, but I still really like it. Girls Fashion Shoot is all about becoming a model for the fictional company Rising Star. Although, if you think about it, you are really acting as a model, graphic designer, creative director, nail technician, because not only do you choose the outfits and posing for these featurettes in fictional publications, but you also put them together, you choose the background, you choose the graphics, and design the entire piece. The thing that I love most about this game is the huge catalog of poses. I feel like this can be a great reference if you are 
you know, stuck with coming up with pose ideas. Of course, to be a Lolita, you do not have to post on social media. You don't have to take photos of your coordinates. But if you are like me and you enjoy that aspect of the fashion, it can really help you come up with new and fresh ideas. I know that it's really pixely, it's a 10 year old game on an outdated portable small platform, but I still feel like it could be a good resource for you. You could even just like make a chart to keep in your phone so that when you're, you know, stuck on doing the same two poses, you can quickly look at it. Style Savvy does also have this feature in its game, but Girls Fashion Shoot has a much larger catalog. Tomodachi Life is a simulator game where you create and move in Mii's to an island and help them solve problems, and you sort of witness their lives. You don't have a lot of direct control over what they do, but you can influence them a little bit. And this has so much meme potential because you can enter your friends, people in your community, and just see how the programming decides to have them interact. Currently, my me is married to Yoshi from Mario. It's wild. I also really like importing Mii's from fictional intellectual properties and just seeing how they interact with me and my real life friends. So where does Lolita come into this? Well, one of the clothing pieces is called the Sweet Dress and it definitely has Sweet Lolita influences in it. And if you do not have this dress in your game, here is my QR code for my me and you should be able to import me <laughs> into the game and unlock this piece. Eventually you can find it in many different colorways. I also welcome you to play with my me on your island if you play Tomodachi Life and send me whatever wild and wacky adventures I happen to do. We are almost out of the 3DS. <laughs> section of this video, I promise. Because Disney's Magical World 2 has a ported version for the Nintendo Switch. It has updated graphics and more added in content, but I personally couldn't justify purchasing it when I already have the 3DS version. And when I went to make this video, I realized that my save file had been completely lost. I already spent so much time grinding other video games in order to capture footage for this video. So instead I'm going to rely on a lot of other YouTubers footage for this section, especially Crystal Dreams, which if her channel is new to you, you've never heard of it, but you enjoy cute video games, I urge you to check it out. She has so much coverage and a great vlog that I think a lot of particularly sweet Lolitas and people interested in kawaii fashion would really love. I think of Disney Magical World and Disney Magical World 2 as Disney's answer to Animal Crossing. It is a cute life simulator. Although I have heard people refer to the game Disney Dreamlight Valley as Disney's version of Animal Crossing, when I found out about that game, it was still in its beta. I felt like there wouldn't be a lot to do and I really don't like the art style of it, so I've not played it. But if any of you have played it, do you recommend it? Should I give it a go? In Disney's Magical World, you perform different tasks and activities for Disney characters and they reward you with stamps. This unlocks new areas and gives you a ton of different cute clothing items and so many of them have Lolita aspects and elements to it. Look at this Jack Skellington inspired outfit. I am obsessed. I would so wear this in real life. Interestingly enough, there was an advertisement for the very first Pokemon game which featured a Lolita. Now, by today's standards, a lot of Lolitas may not consider this Lolita because the skirt's quite short, it's pretty simplistic, but in that time, this definitely was Lolita. There are quite a few instances of Lolita fashion-inspired characters throughout the franchise. The Pokemon Gothita, Gotharita, and Gothitelle are direct inspirations from Gothic Lolita, not only in their name, but also in their look. And every time I have one in my game, I have to name it Monosama. The Slurpuff dress 
available to the player character in X and Y is definitely giving me simplistic Melty Planet vibes. The fairy gym leader Valerie, also in X and Y, is said to be inspired by Wallowita. The character Marley in Pearl and Diamond is said to be inspired by Gothic Lolita as well. I think by today's standards, we would consider her old school Lolita. In Sun and Moon, of course, my girl Lily totally has a Lolita silhouette. I couldn't find any Lolita fashion inspirations in Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet I'm so sick of the uniforms, like we really need fashion in that game. There needs to be an update. Please, please give me fashion or at least a uniform that's a dress. Ugh. A game that is definitely not lacking and has a surprising amount of alternative fashion and J fashion inspired looks is Fortnite. Fortnite is a battle royale TPS where players eliminate one another until one person or one team is left. Fortnite has a paid campaign survival mode as well as hundreds if not thousands of player created maps in the sandbox style mode creative. An objective I've seen to people playing Fortnite is that it is too violent and although there is combat in the game, within the lore you are playing within a simulation so when you're character is eliminated it just sort of poofs and dissolves away there is no i can't say this word on youtube bodily fluids that sounds so much worse fortnite battle royale and creative mode are free to play and you can purchase skins to use in these modes and that's where the j fashion and alternative fashion is and i know i know at epic there is an artist or designer who knows about lolita fashion Please reach out to me. <laughs> the skin Mina Park is wearing a new goth style, but look at that rectangle headpiece. That is a Lolita rectangle headpiece if I've ever seen one. The Queen of Hearts skin is a bit of a reach. I do feel like Lolitas who appreciate Queen of Hearts prints would also appreciate this skin. It has a little bit of a Lolita look to it. And all right, there is also a skin called Lovely, which I'm biased for. It's another stretch, but I feel like the layered look of the top as well as the puffy sleeves, Lolitas can appreciate. And although the skirt is not a Lolita silhouette, it does have a border print. The skin Eevee is closer to a Lolita silhouette, but then the style is very plain. I feel like someone over there is just like putting tiny little elements of Lolita to see how far they can push it. The Halloween skin patch definitely has a one piece Lolita silhouette kind of feeling to it. But by far, the biggest and clearest evidence of Lolita fashion in this game is the skin Belle Berry. Belle Berry is themed around jam. She's definitely giving a sweet Lolita, country Lolita vibe. This silhouette and style clearly looks like it's referencing Lolita fashion. And the fact that the alternate colorway of this skin's outfit is a darker version that's called bittersweet which is a term that Sweet Lolita's often used for the darker colorway of Sweet Lolita releases. I love it. I love her. She's so cute. Fortnite's shop updates daily, so these skins are not always readily available, which Lolita's can relate to. Dresses are released in the same way. But instead of going to the game every single day and checking to see if it's there, there is an app that you can use to mark certain items and it will give you notifications when they are available. I think that Fortnite is a great way to relieve stress, you know, you could turn to it and fire some guns after losing the auction of <laughs> your dream dress or other Lolita stressors. And another great way to unleash your aggression would be through a fighting game like Soul Calibur. There are a vast array of different characters within Soul Calibur, with Amy Sorrell being attributed as the Lolita character. I have to state that the characters in this game are definitely sexualized, which is something that doesn't personally affect me too much. I find that Amy's style of Lolita would be categorized in more arrow Lolita. Her clothes are a bit shorter and a bit more revealing, but I've noticed that with her gameplay and using custom characters with her gameplay style and her clothes, there isn't any overtly sexual 
actual animations attributed with them, at least what I haven't encountered any. I've played a lot of this game, but I did notice it with other characters. Amy's appearance changes throughout the Soul Calibur franchise, but I like her look best in Soul Calibur 6. I feel like it's the closest to actual modern day Lolita fashion as well. Of course, again, it is a little bit more scandalous. <laughs> if you purchase Soul Calibur on the PC like I did through Steam, Amy is actually an additional DLC add-on, but because I purchased the game during a Steam sale, it was only $12, so I didn't mind as much buying one add-on. And as well as getting the character Amy in the game, you get her items in the custom character creator, which I played a lot of this game, but I spent a lot of time in the character creator because it is so much fun. Not only did I make a bunch of different Lolitas by changing every single color within these pieces, there's a couple other pieces that could be sort of Lolita as well. The wedding dress has a similar skirt shape. But I also had a lot of fun creating my friends from Haunts and their characters and then setting them as CPUs with an evenly matched ability and then seeing just which one would win. I think you can also have a lot of fun if you have created OCs. You could create your OC in the character creator and then yourself and then see how they play out. <laughs> I had so much fun in this game. I did not expect to have as much fun as I did. You can play against other people locally. We just plugged two Xbox controllers into my computer and had a lot of fun with that. I forgot to mention that you can also play against people online. Death Smiles was released in 2007 for the arcade and is now seemingly released for everything. It is a horizontal shmup, which I did not know this term until working on this video, but shmup is a short form for which I don't know if YouTube will be mad at me for saying this phrase. I live in constant fear of being flagged, especially as a Lolita content creator, so I'm gonna be safe. I wouldn't classify Death Smile's style as being horror, but it definitely feels like it has a theme of Halloween. Halloween mixed with fantasy and gothic Lolita. It definitely feels like a combination of goosebumps and old, illustrations of Lolita fashion, and I love that. There was apparently a very scandalous marketing strategy in 2008 that heavily pushed the lowly and erotic aspects of these underage characters, which is quite unfortunate. But since then, the publisher has heavily moved away from that. There isn't any graphic or indecent depictions of these characters throughout the game, except possibly with transition screens in between levels. At first, looking at the gameplay of this video game, I thought that it was extremely overstimulating and would be hard to play. But when I actually played it myself, I found that it wasn't that way at all because the movements are so smooth and you can really keep focus on what you're doing and your spray goes quite far. Alice Madness Returns is the sequel to American McGee's Alice, which is a platforming hack and slash game. And if you've followed me for a while, I know you've probably heard me talk about it before or reference it because I absolutely love this game. As you progress through each section of the game, Alice's outfit will change to match her surroundings. There are six DLC outfits that I am only now experiencing because EA's store has changed and there was a while where you could not purchase a DLC. You actually still cannot purchase the DLC from Steam or EA app, but there is a workaround which I will detail here. I will include this link in the description so that you can copy and paste this, but you basically have to open the game in notepad and then change this section from false to true. And the article says this is only available in Steam, but I also tested it in my EA app, which is where I own the game, and it does work. And this is the only way currently to get the DLC on Steam or EA app. 
American McGee, the creator of this game series, is working on another release called Alice Asylum. Since recording this video, an update has come out from the creator of Alice Asylum, basically stating that it has been canceled. EA owns the property and refuses to fund a new game and also refuses to return the property to the owner, so it's just dead. <laughs> I talk about this a lot more in depth in a video on my Patreon, and you can also see all the information on American McGee's Instagram as well as the Alice Asylum Patreon, which is now put into indefinite hiatus and you don't even have to be a member of it to see everything but you can see like the game bible and what could have been and of course we have to wrap up this video with dress up games so there is a free lolita creator on steam which i decided to test out it's basically just a click through where you just select certain options but you can save your lolita as a png file which is cool you could use it as an icon in things. I also found this Lolita dress up game where your characters, your avatars, they look like diva stars, which was like combining two nostalgic things I didn't know I needed. I decided to look at play cute games because I've seen YouTubers make entire videos just playing these wild and wacky games. And I honestly was impressed at the kind of accuracy in the dresses. I thought that it was going to be totally off and not Lolita at all, but the outfits are actually pretty cute. And then of course, Doll Divine has a bunch of different Lolita dress up games. Those are all of the video games that I've played, that I enjoy, that feature Lolita fashion, but there are a few more honorable mentions that I learned about while making this video. I know some of you are probably typing in the comments right now, where is Animal Crossing? Where is The Sims? I didn't mention those in this video just because I already have some videos around them, so definitely give them a watch. And I am planning another Sims video for May, so please subscribe and stay tuned. If you have any experience with these games, please let me know in the comments below. If there's any games that feature Lolita inspiration that I didn't mention, please let me know as well. And as always, stay lovely, happy gaming. Victory and bask in the glory. You're not as pathetic as I thought.